All right, g'day guys, welcome back to a round 14 edition of Just The Tips. It's the third of the bye weeks. In theory, this should be our shortest episode, but our two longest episodes were the two videos I started off by saying, this will be shorter because there's less games. So we'll see what happens. Of course, being only five games, these following teams have the bye this week and thus we won't be talking about. The Crows, the Tigers, the Saints, the Eagles, the Swans, the Pies, Freo and the Ds. Druzy, this round of tipping was possibly the most diabolical in the history of tipping. Big stink. So we, we were filming this right with five minutes to go in the Melbourne Collingwood game. Mm -hmm. Who knows what will happen? But at the moment, Collingwood lead by like 20 points. Mm -hmm. If that happens, the only tip I got right this week was North Melbourne drawing with GWS because everyone gets a point for the draw. That is the only reason I didn't get zero. If Daniel Lloyd could kick straight, that would be 0 and 7. How filthy is that? What did you get? Two out of. Probably seven. Mm. If Colin would win, two out of seven. Yeah, okay. So the difference was you tip Fremantle, obviously. And I tip Fremantle on the show, changed my tip to Gold Coast like an idiot. And uh, yeah, one out of seven. What a stinker. Very good, buddy. Because the round hasn't finished, I can't go through all you know the tipping results yet. Mm. So I will display them on the screen for you now. Uh, but I can't read them out because I don't don't have them yet. Same with the fantasy as well. I will say that Dad, I believe also, uh, well, he, he just sent me a message saying that he tipped Collingwood. And he said, geez, I'm a bloody savant. And sure enough, even he only got three out of seven. Absolute pig. I did tip Collingwood for the upset of the week last you week. Did, there yeah. was about 47 upsets this round. Yeah, the meaningless upset of the round uh, element of our show. Who was your <laughs> upset of the I, week? I think I tipped Gold Coast as my upset of the week. That's what it was. Ah! Yeah. No, actually, Drewsy, I've been looking at my analytics, and it appears that 52.4% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Filthy pigs. Let's put them in the bin, buddy. They're going to get knuckle dusted. No, 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 no. Let's recruit them. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, you yeah. won't we get nothing. Yes, we're yeah. nice. Uh, but if, if you don't subscribe, we have candy. No, but in all seriousness, guys, would really appreciate if you do watch the content and you enjoy it. If you could hit subscribe, I'm trying to, uh, trying to go for about 500 subs a month. You guys yeah. are fantastic. Got me over the line to 12K in May. So I want to be about 12 and a half by the end of the month. A little mm -hmm. bit behind that rate at the moment. So if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Before we get into this round's tip, guys, do remember that this video is brought to you by Manscaped. You can get 20% off and free shipping on their elite body grooming products. And they've got like colognes and boxer shorts and ball deodorants and moisturizers, all the things that you need on a night out. <laughs> Excellent products and you get a great discount and free shipping is really good. That's a really good bonus. So go to manscaped.com, get 20% off using TrueFooty20, all caps, all one word at checkout, and you will get an elite discount. Shave your balls, you filthy animals. So on the Friday night, Drews, we got Geelong taking on the Western Bulldogs top four clash, and I'm probably going to live stream it here on the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, this is, yeah, it's a really good game. Both mm. of these sides I expect will be top four, and it's, you know, it's one of those potential grand final previews, probably yeah. not my, pref uh, my pick, but, um, you know, a really big game at the moment, fixtured for GMHBA in Geelong. Absolutely no idea what the situation yeah. is with COVID by the time we film this. That's the weakness of recording on a Monday because, you know, the fluid COVID situation means this game might be in Geelong or it could be somewhere random. But mm -hmm. either way, let's probably just base it on uh, maybe a neutral ground. But uh, it does kind of Well, they're both from Victoria, <laughs> so if they're both there, it probably will be a GMHBA. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So if, if it isn't G if it's GMHBA, though, I do think that influences quite a lot. But anyway, we can only just assume that maybe it's... GMHB, whatever. Let's have a look at what Geelong did last week. Um, fantastic win against the Power in another top five clash, you'd say. Mm -hmm. um, it was a game I'd originally chalked them up to lose, um, and I thought they could afford to lose and still make the top four. But to win that in the way that they did, really, really good effort. And their top, sorry, their forward line um, is looking fantastic. I think the the big three of uh, Hawkins, Rowan, and Cameron kicked twelve between them, and I think five to Cameron. They're looking really, really scary. Fourteen contested marks to three in the first half. On the other side, the Dogs coming off the bye, but they did dispose of Fremantle fairly comfortably. I mean, Fremantle challenged them, but, you know, they, they looked comfortable to some extent. McCrane Bont was as good as ever. Mm -hmm. The Aaron Norton show almost took off. He kicked one goal five, but, uh, you know, looking very threatening as well. Yeah. How do you see this game going ahead? Don't know. Do not know. Do mm. not know. I don't know. Mm. I cannot give you a tip. Analysis. The Western Cats. Nah. Our confidence is low after the combined yeah. scores of three this round. Uh, Geelong went to the bank last week in Port Adelaide and they made a statement. Small waist, pretty face with a big bang. I thought that Geelong win was a, a very good win, but they, they're hot and cold. They're yes and they're no. They're in, they're out, they're up and they're down. So I don't know. Say, is that uh, Katy, Katy Perry, Perry? Katy Perry. So yeah, they've had a massive win. 
Uh, the Bulldogs, obviously, they're the best side in the competition. We say it every week. They've got the best midfield, and Aaron Norton can take marks, but he can't kick goals. Do you think the best side in the comp? I don't think they're the best side in the comp. One of the best sides in the comp. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, GMHBA. I'm, I'm going to tip Geelong. I'm yeah. going to tip Geelong. <clears throat> I'm going to go Geelong regardless of the venue. Is the GMHBA, I'll be very confident they win. You're right in that they are a little bit hot and cold. They're a little bit yes check and no. hard, so it's hard. Yeah, yeah. In and out. Yeah. Paper bag. <laughs> so I've heard. Paper bag? Oh, yeah, okay, fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to say Geelong win by 20 points. Nice. Yeah, but the Dogs can certainly win this, obviously. Yeah. They're, they're good enough to win, um, but yeah, I feel like Geelong will be too strong. Next up, we have another potential top four clash between the Gold Coast Suns <laughs> and Port Adelaide at Metricon. I'm never going to get sick of making that joke. <laughs> um, Gold Coast coming off a trip to Perth um, where I thought they were quite poor, to be honest. So, I mean, it's no disgrace to lose to Fremantle and Perth. I think they're hard to beat, you know, for especially for a developing side like that. They fought hard. They had field position at times, they mm. defended well, but the end product was terrible. They, they were, were as threatening as a snail. Mm, Not yeah. threatening. Have well, you ever been threatened by a snail? The South American snails, they, there's gun crime that's prevalent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Gold Coast didn't really have anything that uh, threatened the Dockers. They, they set up defensively, as I'll say, because I'm a fucking defensive yeah, expert, yeah, all right? They stopped the spread of Frio, just <laughs> like uh, Perth has stopped the spread <laughs> of coronavirus. Like, I was just going to say, like, Bush on a Saturday night nah. stops the spreading. That's mean. I love you, Bush. I love you more. I suppose you're going to talk about Port Adelaide now, and I'm going to I'm going to do that for you. Port Adelaide coming off the back of a loss. Um, in come, I can't do it. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Port Adelaide, obviously disappointing loss at home to Geelong. They're That's form, what I was going to say. Their form streak against the uh, the top sides this year, or teams that are around their level, has been really stark and quite poor. I mean, they had Rosie kick five. Ollie Wines continuing what is probably an All Australian season mm -hmm. so far. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a crash hot result, and they sort of getting that flat track bully a little bit um, vibe about them. But obviously yeah. there's still plenty of time to go in the season. Gold Coast have only beat Port Adelaide once and it was the first time Gold Coast ever won. It was the first time yeah. they ever played each other. It was a really good game, but they haven't won there since. And Port generally touch them up at Metricon. So I'm expecting a similar result. Are you going to agree? Yeah, no, nah, I think Port will get it done. Well, Dockers played Port three weeks ago and they beat us very comfortably. And we beat Gold Coast comfortably. This should be it. Gold Coast it? should beat Port. Yeah. No. Port, yeah, as you said, they just bully shiter sides and then can't bloody beat the good sides analysis is thriving today port should get the job done quite easily i'm going to tip them to win this one by 36 points and i was thinking 38 so yeah on the same level third game of the round is north melbourne hosting the brisbane lions a very fearsome sort of opponent for north who uh did a good job against G gws to i mean you could say there's two sides of it where yeah. did well to get out to a lead and to blow it in the way that they did is quite disappointing. But nonetheless, no one really would have backed him in to get at least any points from this game. Mm -hmm. um, so they did really well. The uh, You had the regulars like Aaron Hall and Jai Simkin do really well. Cunnington stood up as well. Zebra was prominent. It will be agonising for them because there's not going to be too many opportunities to win games. Mm. So it, it, it'll hurt. But nonetheless, you know, they'll chalk it up as a pretty good performance. On the other side of the ledger, you've got Brisbane who were beaten by the D's pre by No mm -hmm. real shame in that. Um, obviously, the D's are the benchmark of the comp despite mm -hmm. what's happening in there right now um they uh, obviously lifted for that game are you parting i was going to check the score oh, okay. but it looks like Collingwood have won <laughs> nonetheless the uh the lions won't want to drop two in a row and uh up against north despite it being in melbourne at the moment we could mm -hmm. be sydney wherever um they're not going to want to drop this and i don't think they will nope. um zach bailey i will shout out we talked about him drew footy but i haven't had a chance to talk about him yet mm. um yeah seriously good young forward mm. yeah really yeah, good fans amazing. so four against Melbourne I mm. don't think there's been many players to do that this season True. and the, the fashion that he kicked him like running at full speed kicking on the run being chased down by elite defenders mm. um, yeah yeah, big, big hats off in that. Yeah, how do you see this game going? Oh uh, yeah, Brisbane are going to clap North Melbourne cheeks. Let's not forget how good a form Brisbane were in before they lost the tight game to the best team in the competition. Mm. So uh, the Brisbane Lions are fierce. They're out for blood, and they're going to win this game by forty three points. Yeah, probably a good time for them to have a buy. Just sort of probably a bit knackered after that mm. uh, that draining sort of loss, and then uh, to sort of reset. Lockie Neal maybe another week to build up fitness. Mm -hmm. He's been underdone this year. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be an easy win. Forty one points. The penultimate game of the round is the GWS Giants versus Carlton. We did just talk about the Giants um, had their opportunities to win the game against mm -hmm. North, but also on the flip side could have easily dropped that game. So they did well to fight back. They kind of st like stagnated a little bit in the last couple of weeks. I was talking them up as you know 
uh, when they beat the Eagles, I was like, this side, there's a top four side under there somewhere, but yeah. we just don't see it all the time. And mm-hmm. then they've gone straight back to their early season form, yeah. getting smashed by Brisbane, um, and then, yeah, not getting the chocolates against North. That, that's actually a really bad result for their season. Mm-hmm. The top eight battle is really tight at the moment, yeah. and with West Coast winning, um, and then Essendon beating West Coast a couple of weeks ago, GWS is stagnating, and it's, yeah. it's getting a little bit stinky. On the flip side, you've got Carlton coming off the bye, but pre-bye, uh, they kind of had their season ended, if it wasn't ended already, by West Coast. Another team that's really, really disappointing at the moment. There's a lot of talk in the media about you know external reviews for Carlton yeah. at the moment. So not a great place to be, but this is exactly the sort of environment where teams come back and win. So uh, that'll be really interesting. Yeah. Um, how do you see this game going? Yeah, both teams with their backs against the wall here, both really in desperate need of a result. Because if you lose this one, it is starting to get septic in terms of stink. Like, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Carlton just haven't looked like they can just reach that next gear which they need to dominate games against somewhat decent sides still haven't been a top eight side not that gws are a top eight side i don't know who i'm going to tip in this game jesse probably have more faith in uh, gws to win this one to be honest though but yeah very tough one to pick for me i'm going to say who are you going to say uh i am gws i was going to tip gws that's a conservative tip i think they're a better side but this is the upset of the round for me because oh, yeah. of the the pressure that Carlton's under at the moment. Yeah. And I do need to tip teams that I think like are iffy to try and catch up to you. Yeah. Is, I'm pretty much toast now. Ah. I'm going to tip you no guys. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't do it, Carlton fans. I'm yeah. sorry, I just can't do it. Let us down too many yeah. times. Upset of the round though. I think they can definitely win this game. Final game of the round, Hawthorne versus Essendon. This was the first live stream of the season. I don't know if you remember this. Yes. Yeah, you came over. Yep. Um, we witnessed Hawthorne come back from 39 points down mm-hmm. to break Essendon hearts. And with the finals race the way it is at the moment, Essendon will look back at that and rue that. So they won't, won't want that to happen again. Hawthorne coming off the huge win against Sydney. Not many people would have expected that. I think generally, historically, they do well at the SCG, but obviously this is a new young side. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know how much to look into that. But yeah. again, Sydney proving they're not that great great at home yeah. for some reason they're just like the same everywhere <laughs> like there's no home or away advantage with Sydney it seems John Newcomb was amazing as we talked about on Drew Footy Show 14 tackles on debut wet record breaking uh, maybe a little new energy new life into that Hawthorne young mm-hmm. side which was you know in horrible form so it's good to see them back and I knew they would come back Essendon pre-buy we witnessed them up close mm-hmm. to take on Richmond at the Optus Stadium um, in the Dreamtime Showdown <laughs> um, honestly really good effort they yeah. lost by 39 points but that doesn't show the, how good that contest was mm-hmm. it was actually quite a similar spectacle spectacle to West Coast and Richmond in a lot of ways yeah. um, but in well, I guess in some similar fashion Richmond sort of steamrolled over the top of them but playing really good football Darcy Parrish is an incredible footballer at the moment Andrew McGrath is out with a PCL I think it yeah. is so bad injury Rough. But I still think if Essendon are serious about you know pushing for final, final, this is a game they should be looking their lips for. Mm-hmm. But it's a bad time to play Hawthorne. So how do you see this game going? I think Essendon were in really good form uh, pre buy Obviously, rough loss against Richmond. But I mean that will happen when you play the best one of the best teams of the bloody millennium. I'd imagine it would be weird to lose to Richmond, but I wouldn't know for sure. <laughs> Analysis. Nice. Before that, they beat West Coast. They had a tight game against uh, GWS. Mm-hmm. Can't really remember who else, but they were in good form. We remember that they were in good form. They, yeah. they were really in that top eight conversation right there, thereabouts. They've had one bad loss, but they should be beating Hawthorne. I mean, Hawthorne haven't really shown too much this year at all. So I'm going to tip Essendon in this mm. game. At the MCG question mark, we don't know where it is, but I'll tip Essendon to win. Nick Cox is my new favourite player, and uh, I'll tip them to win by 19 points. Hmm. I'm iffy on this one as well. Yeah, it's going to be tight. I feel like Hawthorne played well against Essendon as we saw in round one. Yeah, but Essendon were in the driver's seat for that whole game. And then they just like had a very stinky second half. I don't mm. think it'll happen again. But Hawthorne is coming off this really good win. I feel like there's momentum there. Mm. And coming off the bye, sometimes the teams are a bit shaky. This Baby, way. get shaky after school. You're really loving the throwbacks today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my second upset of the round. I could see myself changing my tip for this. I'll, I'll lock in Essendon for now. Nah, yeah, and then you're going to tip Hawthorne. He's going to tip Hawthorne. I'll tip Hawthorne and get it wrong. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of this week's tipping show. Obviously, a bit of a shorter one with the shorter rounds, but next week we'll be back to normal. If you haven't seen it already, go check out the Drew Footy Show on Drew's channel. If you want to see a vlog of me witnessing one of the best games this year, at then go Stadium. watch Dockers vs. Gold Coast vlog on my channel. I did vlog the Eagles Richmond game, um, and that was one of the best, probably the best night I've had this year. Like, it's been fantastic. So uh, go check that out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Already, like the video, and we'll see you in the next video.